what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Welcome back to SPTV, everyone. I'm joined today by my friend, Mark Fisher. How's it going, Mark? Hi, Aaron. I'm doing just great. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, let me start by showing everybody uh, your YouTube channel, you and Janice Gillum Grady, our Scientology stories, Peeling the Onion. Uh, you, Mark, spent a whole bunch of years working directly for David Miscavige. Janice Gillen yeah. Grady spent a whole bunch of years working directly under L. Ron Hubbard and then other years working um, under Miscavige as well. So if you want to hear some amazing stories, go and subscribe to their channel. So uh, the chat we're doing today is, I guess you could call it a follow-up, a part two, a sequel to a video I did a couple days ago where um, – I did a video about a program. This is one of the 5,000 documents that, that have been leaked from the Office of Special Affairs International. And guys, it's 5,000 documents. It's like 400,000 pages. <laughs> and one of these programs was designed specifically to destroy former Sea Org member Chuck, Chuck Beatty. And you called me and you said, I got a program pretty much exactly like that one for me as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and your story is incredible. And we have that program and um, we want to show it to you. Um, there's two different documents that we're going to look at today. But these things are fascinating because this is really a glimpse into the inner workings of the deepest <laughs> trenches of the Church of Scientology, the Dirty Tricks Department, where they really have nothing better to do than spend millions of tax exempt dollars to follow, investigate, harass, intimidate, stalk, and destroy. And these programs are quite literally the steps that they take to do that. So. Yeah. And I hadn't I mean, seen this program until Mark Headley sent it to me. I mean, the, the things that happened in the program, I, I knew about them obviously because they happened to me, but I had no idea. I, uh, I'd never seen this program until a few weeks ago. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, Mark has asked that we redact some of the names of some of his former uh, business associates that are mentioned in this program, and we've already done that. So uh, let's start out by just um, – let's explain to some people what we're looking at right here. So at the top of this document, when it says WDC OSA, that is the Watchdog Committee member for the Office of Special Affairs. The Watchdog Committee is composed of, what, 12, 13, 14 people, something like that? Yeah, it's everyone. It's one for every sector of management of Scientology. Yeah, that's right. L. Ron Hubbard broke Scientology up into about, uh, is it 14? Do you remember the precise number? No, I don't. But so, it was things like, you know, whatever, Sea Org orgs and, and uh, uh, missions and OSA and, you know, just different sectors. Marketing, mater book, you know, materials, all this kind of stuff. And we'll see these 14 people called the Watchdog Committee are essentially a committee of people who as a group are the senior most managing body in all of Scientology. Now, Mike Rinder was the watchdog committee member for the office of special affairs. So uh, WDC OSA here means Mike Rinder and the deputy commanding officer external for the office of special affairs international is who is sending this program to Mike Rinder. Okay. Uh, it's her name's her name's Linda Hamill. You see much love Linda. It's yeah. Linda Hamill. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh, okay. You said Linda Hamill in my mind. I was thinking Marcy Hamilton, but Marcy Hamilton is someone no. who was at PAC. She was at PAC. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. No, no, no. Uh, I'm thinking Linda Hamilton. Linda. Ha wait, wait. Did you know the senior? Linda did, Hamill. Yeah. No, but there was a Linda Hamilton and senior HCO PAC, but you didn't know her, right? No, I knew a guy named Hamish Hamilton. Uh, maybe he was married. She was, he was married to her. I don't know, but. Uh, All right. Yeah, That's know. okay. All right, so um, it says, note, we have implemented this program, started on the interviews, and I just got word that Fisher says he's going to take down his photos from XSO, and he's not going to be posting there anymore. What does XSO mean in this context? Um, that's uh, former Sea Org members, and, and it's basically, it was a chat group that was set up by um, somebody on Yahoo back in 2005 or six, and uh, it was a members-only Yahoo chat group. Uh, called XSO members. And uh, that's where a lot of us started posting for the first time and reconnecting with other people who had left the Sea Org because we'd never, we'd never reached out. We'd never talked to each other before. 
So in retrospect, who is it that was in your life that would have been feeding Scientology information such as Mark is going to take down his photos from the XSO message board and he's not going to be posting there anymore? Well, I had, uh, you know, I had a spy, a Scientology paid operative who acted as my friend from 1999 until 2009. And I didn't find this out that he was that person until 2009 when Marty Rathbun, I talked to him for the first time after uh, he had gotten out of uh, the Sea Org and started speaking out. And he told me about an operation that they ran on me in, in the year 2000 to get me out of uh, to get me out of the country to Mexico and uh, get some blackmail material on me. And he said, we had a guy that did it, but I don't know who he was because it was arranged through OSA. And I, I said to him, I said, oh, my God, that's my friend. I just talked to him on the phone an hour ago. And that's how I found out who this person was. And uh, and basically, I then spoke out to the Tampa Tribune in their Truth Rundown series, the second wave of articles and told my story and joe childs and tom tobin came out to las vegas and interviewed me on video and, and uh basically we outed this guy but he was the one he he came to work for us at our mortgage company around 1998 1999 with his wife and uh he was basically spying on you know janice grady or husband paul and janice's sister terry and me but I, we had no idea you know what i mean and so it wasn't until i left that company at 2000 to go off in a, to another company that he all of a sudden became my best buddy and uh, he ran several ops on me and uh, they were concerned about me because at that time that's when the Lisa McPherson um, criminal investigation was going on and uh, Miscavige was down in Clearwater he didn't want to be indicted and he, he wanted me out of the out of the picture so anyway that's how that's how they they had this person uh, and he would find out because I'd talk to him on the phone almost every day. He was he was a friend of mine. He lived in Arizona at that point, but we still talked on the phone. We traveled uh, around the country and around the world. And uh, he basically was keeping tabs on me. Wow. How many years, uh, being able to look back on it, you know, in hindsight, how many years was this guy who was secretly being paid to spy on you for Scientology? How many years was he in your life feeding information to Scientology? Um, I think we he got hired at our company probably around 1998, definitely 1999. Um, but then he was with me, he was with us and or with me at least until 2000, August 2009, when the uh, Truth Rundown uh, article came out. And at that point, I outed him and and I he called me up and I basically you know confronted him on it and uh, uh, he he'd like denied it but you know i knew it was him i mean there's no other way to not know it was him because i have photographs uh, of the different things that we did together that scientology knew about and uh, he also was the source of the information for this program that uh, we're about to go over but uh, we we had had you know ever since uh, we left the sea organization in september 1990 and we came to las vegas in december uh, 1990 and got into the mortgage business, uh, we had been a target of Miscavige and Scientology ever since that time, because that's when they first sent in uh, the Scientology private investigator, David LeBeau, Dave LeBeau in, uh, and that's the first time they ever used him was to come and become an employee of our mortgage company in Las Vegas and spy on us and run operations on us then to break up our company and, and, and uh, you know, disrupt us. So... So yeah. this this guy was spying on you for Scientology for 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you had never suspected him until you were told by Marty Rathbun that this guy's been doing this the whole time. Right. I mean, there were th there were things that happened that when in retrospect you go, oh, yeah, maybe he was because he got very interested, you know. The thing is, is that we always disseminate, you know, when I became friends with people, after a while, I told them I used to be in Scientology. We'd talk about it. Of course, it was in the news. Uh, things would come up. And uh, this guy, you know, became, was on the um, on the internet, uh, the uh, alt-religion Scientology uh, news group. He was following that. I wasn't even on it. And he was following it and asking me questions. And then later on, when the anonymous protests happened, uh, he and I talked about that, you know, on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, he acted like, you know, oh, yeah, the Scientology is really crazy and all that. And, of course, I was just, you know, I gave him my opinions and talked to him and stuff. But um, so that in retrospect, I go, yeah, OK. I mean, you know, he, something's he happening with the audio said, right now. Oh, can you hear that? No. Oh, yeah, we, we have to wait for that to go away. 
it's the, okay. It went away. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Carry on. Oh, I mean, but basically, I mean, in retrospect, I could see that there were all these different things, but, um, you know, I didn't suspect it at the time. That's for sure. And so, uh, just, so I understand and everyone else understands. So this is a guy that Scientology managed to spy on you for 10 years. Was this guy ever involved in Scientology ever? No. Wow. No, wow. he was a pack. He was a Pakistani uh, American. He's American, but he's from Pakistani descent. And he and his wife first, uh, our company hired his wife uh, and his wife was uh, Terry Gamboa's assistant. Okay. And uh, I don't think she even knew what was going on. I, I just never knew, right? But then he, came, he, we hired him to be a loan officer because she said, "Oh, you know, my husband, you know, he he could be a really good loan officer for you guys." So he got hired. I had no connection with them whatsoever. They were they were uh, clamped on to Terry Gamboa and her husband Fernando, um, you know, and they they buddied around with them and all that. I I first time I ever met uh, this guy. His name's Ferris Khan. I don't care about. Uh, I don't care to just disclose that it's no problem but the first time i ever met him was at terry's house we were there all over there watching a boxing match on closed circuit and he was a really good cook and he cooked dinner and that's the first time i ever met him but um, it wasn't until i left city mortgage to go work at another company that all of a sudden he became very interested in what i was doing and and started you know buddying around with me and palling around with me in retrospect do you now believe that he was already working for Scientology when he first entered your life or did they recruit him because he was already in your life? No, I think he was sent in. I think Dave LeBeau, you know, recruited somebody, you know, at that point, Dave LeBeau had become, I guess, their main private investigator and they need people to spy. And, you know, you'll see, I know you've seen some of the other documents. They spy on all sorts of people and, you know, they're quote unquote paid friends. I mean, this guy, this guy had to be paid a lot of money in order to follow me and spy on me because he took me on trips. He paid for different things. Uh, he uh, paid me to do some work when I first left City Mortgage because they were uh, concerned that when I left the company that I wasn't financially going to be able to make it right away. So he offered me a job uh, and paid me for like the first two, three months that I was uh, that I'd left the company. And uh, it was all day coincident with uh, the Lisa McPherson uh, investigation in, in Clearwater with the uh, medical examiner and Miss Gavage was concerned. And uh, uh, I actually was hooking up with, um, you know, the Lisa McPherson trust that was down in Clearwater, which, you know, was uh, Robert Minton and Stacy uh, Brooks, Stacy Young and Jesse Prince. Um, Stacy had been my uh, twin in the RPF when I was in the C organization. RPF is Rehabilitation Project Force. And we were really close friends. And I'd been uh, tight with her for many years. So I planned on going down to visit her and Jesse when Jesse got down to Florida. And when Miscavige found out about that uh, and heard that I was coming down, he was convinced I was going to join up with the, the Lisa McPherson Trust and basically testify against him that he controlled everything in Scientology because he did. And, um, and, and uh, he knew that I knew that. So they had this guy uh, divert me instead, take me on a vacation down to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, to meet with a quote unquote investor in his new business. And that we had to go down there instead. It was imperative that we go down there and it would be an all expense paid trip, at, trip down to Puerto Vallarta. And so sure enough, um, I had to cancel going to Clearwater because, you know, I couldn't miss this out, you know. So we went down there and I'm sure the trip was completely paid by Scientology. And uh, we were down there three, four days and basically we we're hanging out at the bars. We went to some gentlemen's strip strip clubs and stuff. And I didn't know it at the time, but they surreptitiously, uh, he surreptitiously videotaped me uh, getting a, a table dance from uh, some Mexican uh, dancers and uh, sent all that material to Miscavige. And I didn't find this out until Marty Rathman told me about it in 2009 because he said that he and uh, Miscavige watched it and they were just like, look at that guy. You know what I mean? And, you know, just trying to talk me, you know you know, talk bad about me because they had, they wanted blackmail material so that I would, you know, they could use it against me not to speak out. 
Scientology tax exempt money being put to good use. I mean, I think people really have a hard time like totally grasping because it's so unbelievable ha ha that, that Scientology would go through so much trouble to monitor former members' lives in such detail and try to manipulate their behavior and frame them and set them up. So Miscavige is having a whole bunch of crap going on down in Clearwater, um, uh, a la the Lisa McPherson Trust. He doesn't want you hooking up with those guys. He hears you have a trip planned to Clearwater. He mm -hmm. gets his Scientology spy to arrange a fake investor meeting in Mexico, pay for your trip, all expense paid trip to Mexico, all this uh, entertainment, and all of this is being paid for by Scientology that's just right. to keep you away from Clearwater. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's even small potatoes in comparison to like what they did in 1992 to 91, 92 to Terry and Fernando Gamboa. They they paid to get them completely out of the country to Australia for two years, set up a whole bogus investor who wanted a, a horse ranch in Australia because they knew uh, Terry loved horses and offered to pay them one hundred thousand dollars a year to go down there buy a horse ranch and entertain their clients. These were these guys posed as investors from Hong Kong and they were just completely Scientology operatives just to get Terry out of the country because the IRS, they were trying to get their IRS tax exemption. And Terry had been a director at Author Services and also a trustee of the Church of Spiritual Technology. And Miscavige didn't want her anywhere near the IRS. So they paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for uh, Terry and Fernando to go to Australia, live there. They actually uh, leased a, 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 a horse ranch in Australia, and then they had horses and all that sort of stuff. And they got paid over $100,000 a year to do that. And then once the tax exemption happened in 93... Oh, all of a sudden that was all dried up and, and uh, they ended up having to come back to Vegas. And this is all documented in the Tampa uh, Bay Times, uh, the truth rundown, that whole story is pretty wild. Wow. You know, even as recently as um, uh, you know, I, I tend to be a bit of oblivious to some of the OSA tactics that go on around me. But in retrospect, and I feel so stupid even remembering this in retrospect, around 2015, 2016, Scientology arranged for two fake hedge fund managers to come down to Clearwater and uh, and meet with me, you know, after I left um officially left Scientology in 2014. I opened up my own investment research business catering to hedge funds. Right. And, and in retrospect, they arranged this meeting at a hotel and they were asking me questions about projects and stuff. They had no business knowing anything about, and I was too much of a puss in the moment to call them out on it. And I wish I would have just stood up and walked away. But anyway, I mean, well, one of the one of the reasons I, I like going over these all these programs that are being leaked is because there is a 100 percent chance they are doing all of this and worse to all of us in present time, whether we know it or not. <laughs> right. Right. The only difference for me now is that I could give a a death. You know what I mean? I don't really care anymore. I'm retired. Uh, they, I don't have any reputation or business that they could try and ruin. You know what I mean? My family, you know, the other hold they held over me was my mother and that they, they ruined that years ago. And, um, you know, I don't really care if they, if they try and do something to me, I got nothing to hide. All I'm doing is telling the truth. And that's all, all of us are doing is telling the truth. And if they want to try something, go ahead. It's not, they're not going to get anything, you know? Yeah. Okay, let's jump back to this program here. And we don't necessarily have to go through the whole thing, but I want people to get a flavor of the kind of stuff that they're talking about. They know everything about you here. They know all of your plans. They know your financial situation. They know everyone you're associated with professionally, your friends, your expenses. Um, uh, let's see. The purpose of this program, guys, remember, this is a program written by Scientology's Office of Special Affairs to destroy Mark Fisher. Purpose of the program to end Fisher's black propaganda of Scientology. Major target Fisher dismissed as an attacker or totally restrained and muzzled. Um, That's pretty heavy. Yeah, exactly. So like uh, so let's let's talk about this, what this means exactly. Dismissed restrained muzzled what does that mean to you 
well, dismissed as an attacker means that, oh, well, he's, you know, they discredit me to the point where they're, oh, you can't believe him, right? And, uh, uh, you know, the rest of it restrained and muzzled, meaning they don't want me talking, speaking out. You know, <clears throat> I started to speak out during that time period in that message board group, the ex-Scientology, ex org members, right? And that was their biggest fear. And it's it was part of their control because... Before the internet, there was no way that we could get a hold of people and talk. I, I didn't run into, we didn't meet former Scientologists, except we had a bunch of former Sea Org members in the 1990s that came to work at our mortgage company because they blew too. You know what I mean? So that was the only connection we had with any former uh, Sea Org members. So when this message board group started up, uh, Janice was the first one. He said, Mark, you should check out this group. We can get in there. You know, it's a, it's a, a membership only and, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. So we did. And all of a sudden we started reconnecting with former Scientology Sea Org members that we hadn't seen in years. And uh, we started comparing notes. You know, which is the biggest thing Scientology does not want done. They do not want the truth out there. This whole purpose of all of this crap is just to suppress free speech and to suppress the truth about what happened. And it's so funny because when when you read like the their descriptions of me, because there's other dispatches and stuff in regard to this, you know, the OSA, the OSA people like they, you know, you know this term and because you were a Scientologist. Oh, his natter. Oh, he's, you know, his out rudiments of with uh, or with Scientology, his natter. In other words, like it's all bullshit, basically, they're saying. And it's that's a Scientology term. Natter means basically saying, oh, I'm bitching about things that, you know, that are untrue. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're actually talking about truthful things that happened. And despite what they try and do to discredit us, it doesn't doesn't get rid of the truth. You know what I mean? It's not like that we're not telling the truth. You know, other things that they may try and get us to do to black, you know, to paint us as bad people and this and that, to try and entrap, because when you when you read the, the program, I mean, they try and entrap me in different things and get me fired from my business and turn me into the IRS. I mean, those type of things are meant to damage me when all I'm doing is trying to tell the truth about what happened in Scientology. Right. Hey, in retrospect, do you know wh who was the member of that XSO Yahoo group who was uh, a Scientology spy? Do you know? I don't, but you mentioned the name Shapiro in that program the other day, and I think it was a guy named Ken Shapiro, and he's he was an ex-ASHO uh, staff I, member years ago. I know and I Ken. think that's who the but I think that's who they were talking about. And I think he was the one that was going in there and printing out all the stuff. That's just my suspicion. I don't know for a fact, but that I, I think that was one of the things. Um, the guy who started the XSO message board, his name is Mick Wenlock, who is a former Sea Org executive and just a great guy. Uh, but he set up the group to, he didn't want anybody, you know, nobody talking really negatively, you know, or, or you know, uh, attacking that type of thing. So like people like Arnie Lerma, who had been attacking on the internet and, and Jerry Armstrong, they were barred from the group. They Once somebody started starting a fight, you know, like uh, uh, almost like a uh, Twitter war, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, they were they were kicked out because it was basically supposed to be a safe space where where we could share our stories and, and uh, reconnect. Wow. Ken Shapiro, you dirty dog. If you're out there and you've been falsely implicated, contact me to clear your name. We'll do it. We'll do an interview. <laughs> you know, I know Ken Shapiro when I was still on staff in Philadelphia and, and Ken was still a reg for Asho. For some reason, he managed to convince Asho to temporarily slash permanently post him in Philadelphia as the Asho Reg for Philly. I know that sounds crazy because that's not the way the Sea Org works, but yeah. <laughs> some, some, somehow they did that for a while. Okay, so yeah. let's take a look at this. Um, that, was, that was you being um, dismissed, restrained, and muzzled. These are, these are very standard boilerplate primary targets here. Get the LV friend. Okay, so that means get your Las Vegas friend fully briefed and prepared. Well, that has to be your- uh, That's Ferris Khan. That's Ferris, Ferris Khan. Khan. Yeah, I sent you pictures. I don't know if you saw them or not. I sent you pictures of him and I, me on his trips. I, I did get them, but, and I can bring it up at the end because I don't want to mess up my screen sharing right now. And Oh, no, no, that's okay. So, and then you can see Brief the PI in the background. That's got to be Dave LeBeau. Uh, um, provide basic PRC data. Isn't that public records something or other? Yeah, public I think so. 
Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, INVCHF, everyone stands for Invest Chief, um, which is a, p a post in OSA International, right? Um, I love vital target number one, coordinate and clear all actions with legal and attorneys as per OSA network order 60 legal approval so that nothing is done that could rebound on us. Any attorneys that are out there taking their dirty money and saying, oh yeah, it's legal to harass and muzzle these people and suppress free speech and, oh, let's get them fired and turn into the IRS. Those attorneys are they're so unscrupulous. It's not even funny. And, and, and if they pre approve this, they're basically, uh, you know, helping Scientology commit criminal activities. Let's just put it that way. Unbelievable. Um, okay. So let's see. Monitor, uh, Mark's postings on XS message board on a daily basis in order to gauge his reaction to the actions being done in this program. Holy shit, Mark, full disclosure. I have not read this program yet. You sent this okay. to me. I have not read this yet. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, the insanity of this shit. So, hey, all the stuff that we're doing to him, let's monitor the board to see how it's affecting him. This is insane. Um, okay. Uh, by the way, by the way, by the way, one of the things that I have concluded after reading some of these programs, um, uh, the one from a couple of days ago and other ones, I have been so unbelievably careless in my personal and professional life about who I have allowed to get close to me, that it is amazing um, Scientology has not taken me down. <laughs> I just, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm going to yeah. become a, I'm going to become a, the more of these programs I read, I'm going to become a hermit. I'm going to become a complete recluse um, uh, or recluse, whatever the word is. Okay, so let's see. Have the friend remain in remain. communication with Mark. Oh, my God. <laughs> handle any slows, maintain security. Can, okay. can I say something about that? Yes. You, know, you think this person's your friend. You don't think that he's an operative for Scientology. So you think, you know, since you spent a lot of time with this person and you talk regularly about your family, your friends, your this, that, your that, that there's no reason why you shouldn't say whatever it is you feel comfortable saying. But, you know, they're monitoring everything that you're saying. It's just insane. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, and, and for 10 years, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Um, okay. So get the private investigator to set up a safe name, address, and phone. Okay. That's uh, the, 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 they had, they got some private investigator to set up. They're going to come after me because uh, I work in the mortgage business. I'm a mortgage broker. I was then in Las Vegas. And so what they were doing was setting up a safe name like Citizens Commission on Mortgage Fraud or whatever, like another BS name that Scientology always comes up in. And that's literally when you get down lower down. That's how I spotted it, that it was Scientology oh. it was because it was such a bullshit name. You know what I mean? But anyway, they set up a name, address and phone number so that they could contact my my business people. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> OK, I have to jump in. I'm sorry. When <laughs> when my uh, there was a period around 2015 that um, Mike Rinder started working uh, for me in my investment research company. And we get a knock at the door. We were working out of a, a, the a office in, in my house. And um, we get a knock on the door. And I open the door. And it's two agents identifying themselves as agents with the Florida Department of Agriculture. And I sort of laugh in their face. I'm like, oh, oh really? Don't, don't, don't you mean agents for the Church of Scientology? And they're like utterly confused. They're like, what? What? what <laughs> who? I'm like, you expect me to believe that you guys aren't working for the Church of Scientology? You're agents with the Department of Agriculture? And they're right. like, or, yeah, we're, we're agents with the Department of Agriculture. So basically, Scientology had submitted uh, reports to the state that I was running an unlicensed PI company out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> and so Mike Rinder came to the door and is like, gentlemen. Come on inside. We've got it. We got so we got a story to tell you. They <laughs> they could not believe what they had stumbled into. It was absolutely hilarious. Um, okay, so let's go. Uh, work out the details of the pretext the PI will use for investigating Fisher and get this cleared with the attorney. Um, uh, 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 is this still the same thing you were just talking about? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. This would be along the lines of investigating on behalf of a client who lost money in earlier deals that Fisher was working arranging mortgages for the client who were putting in swimming <gasps> pools for a company called Cascade Pools. Now this is a whole nother operation that they ran. I wasn't even I wasn't even at that company that they're talking about. So they were confused about what they're even talking about. Didn't you say that when you showed this program to Janice, she said that yeah. they had been sued by Cascade Pools? Yeah, what happened, basically, I used to work at City Mortgage was Janice and Paul's and, uh, you know, the company that we all worked at in Las Vegas for many years. But I left in 2000 to go make more money because I, I basically dedicated myself there and I wasn't making enough money. So I moved to a different company in the year 2000. Well, shortly thereafter, um, City Mortgage had gotten into a relationship with this swimming pool company in Las Vegas, and uh, they would arrange the, the loans, the pool loans for the people so they could get their pools done. And then this pool company would put them in. I don't know what happened, but apparently it all fell apart. The company went bankrupt or went out of business and they turned around, Janice told me, and sued Paul and Janice. OK, so, you know, I, I it made me suspect after and Janice and I were talking about this, that maybe that was a Scientology operation they were setting up to go after and blow apart their company because the company blew apart like a year or two after that. You know what I mean? There was a lot. You know, it's the funny thing is, is Aaron, just real briefly, um, uh, looking back, every time there was something strange in our business life. It had to be Scientology because everyday life doing mortgages is refinancing and helping people buy houses. That's it, right? But when they come in with these crazy ideas for commercial or this or that, you know what I mean? They always ended up to be a bunch of waste of time, right? And Paul Grady got involved with a lot of that because he did commercial financing, right? But, you know, it just all these things that would happen, you look back on it, you go like, I'll bet you, because Scientology, one of their policies at OSA is to infiltrate a group and then blow it apart, you know? So they do that to a business, and it makes sense that that's what they were trying to do. Well, because at that time in that company, you had you, you had Janice Grady, you had Paul Grady, you had Terry Gamboa. Some of Scientology's most senior executives are all working. Well, at more. The same it was like even was more than that. <laughs> who, who, are, who are some other key well, names? Well, then we had uh, Terry's husband, Fernando, but then we had uh, G Cheryl Detchev, who had been the CEO, CMO for years, and her husband, Gene. OK, we had Jan Sims, who had been Shelly Miscavige's friend in RTC. She came and worked with us. We had Jeff Walker, who ha used to be the senior CS International and the senior CS FSO. He came and he worked for us. We had a guy named Kenny Lipton. Kenny Lipton, who was the, the brother of Peggy Lipton, he was a longtime Commodore's messenger and executive in management. So we had all these people working for us. And we were before the Aftermath Foundation. We were the Aftermath Foundation. If people could find us, we would teach them the mortgage business and put them to work. Wow. wow. You want to talk about a target rich environment. Holy oh, yeah. yeah. Shit. Well, and I can understand Miscavige must have been shitting in his pants because, you know, all these senior executives who basically, you know, tied all of the, the crap in Scientology to him. He, he, he obviously, you know, he was worried about it. We weren't doing anything except trying to make money and get on with our lives. You know what I mean? So someone by the name of Blow Drill says, I went into their company when I was living in Las Vegas. It was sort of crazy. Do you know who this is? No. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Let me hide that one. We'll get back to the document. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, as part of his investigation, the private investigator will begin by interviewing some of Fisher's and City Mortgage's ex-partners, associates who are now on the outs with them. Oh, the ex-owner of Cascade Pools? <laughs> They will be asked questions about Fisher's involvement in the Cascade flap, what he has been doing since then, who he currently works for. This is to include, wow, I mean, this is the level of fucking detail. These guys are yeah, and, and these it. and these names, these names they got from Ferris Khan because these people were my friends and they had nothing to do with anything. I wasn't even involved. Cascade Pools was after I left, but the other names that you'll see in here. They, they have people that, that he was involved with. See, because here's the thing, too. Here's how they blow apart your friendships. I lost friends and people that I was 
you know, training. Like I trained a lot of people from scratch how to do mortgages and they would come and they'd be part of my team. Right. Well, Ferris, obviously, because he he came to visit me and we'd go to dinner together as a team with the, he would learn their names and learn who they were. And then he would strike up relationships with them. Friendly, quote unquote. Right. And then. Lo and behold, months later, all of a sudden, these people would had leave me or they wouldn't return my phone calls anymore. Or I would leave messages to, for some of these people and they just wouldn't call back. And so I'd call and say, hey, what's wrong? What happened? Nothing. No communication whatsoever. And it wasn't until this program started happening because they're the ones, we'll get to that, that I realized that he was the one that was blowing up these friendships and, and blowing them away from me. Lord only knows what he had to convince those people of to make them completely reject you like that. Well, what he did is he took the information that you'll see in this program and said, you need to stay away from him or he cheated you on this or, you know, uh, you know, the third party law in Scientology, whatever it was. You know what I mean? Or, you know, Mark said this about you behind your back. He's such a terrible guy. It, it, would, it didn't even matter. It just would blow things apart. But the, the main one that you'll keep going, you'll see um, the main one here is one of these people that uh, I taught the mortgage business, his daughter and then him. And uh, his daughter became very successful and in him. And then he contacted or the, this private investigator that was setting up the Citizens Commission or whatever. They contacted him and her and basically, you know, tried to dirty me up with them. So they stopped talking to me because of that. Absolutely incredible. All right. Yeah. Let's get jump back to this document here. Because yeah. actually step number four here. I mean. I'm just going to continue to be blown away by this program. Get the feedback from the friend as to what Fisher's reaction is to the interviews and amend the approach to more precisely hit what he is protecting. I mean, the only goal that they have set is generate enough menace and threat to Mark Fisher, threaten what he cares about the most so that he will stop talking about us. They will stop at nothing. I'm, it's so sick. I can't believe an organization like this. Like, like, like. By the way, every one of the four hundred thousand pages that I'm, I referred to were leaked was given to the FBI fifteen years ago. The FBI has no idea how to even interpret most of these pages. No, it couldn't. It's all in Scientology words. Yeah. But I mean, I believe in my my layman's opinion. What do I know, Mark? I grew up in a cult, you know. As did you. <laughs> um, that all of these documents, you know, taken in totality, uh, essentially outline a case for, you know, prosecution of Scientology under the RICO Act. But how would the FBI ever know? They don't have anyone that can help them decipher four hundred thousand pages of, of right. evidence of of crimes, criminal activity. You know. So yeah. anyway, number five. <sighs> what do we have here? Go ahead. You want to do that? Yeah, I get PI to interview Bruce Bartman. That's the guy who I was training, most recent partner who he had a falling out with, including asking questions about how Fisher spends his money and reports to the IRS, all extensive overseas business trips that he has taken. OK, so uh, Bruce Bartman is the guy that I told you about him and his wife and his daughter. I taught them the business, you know, and then all of a sudden they just stopped talking to me. Right. Um, but Ferris Khan knew them and got, you know, became friends with them, too, and basically turned them against me. So anyway, so. They, they, one of their lines of attack you'll see in this program is that I, quote, unquote, you know, was taking, you know, improper uh, deductions on my taxes. Well, I had a I had a CPA. Do I was making a lot of money then. And I had a LLC, a limited liability corporation. And I had a, a CPA who used to work for the IRS. He did my taxes every year and he determined all the stuff. So it was there was nothing illegal or anything like that. But of course, that's not going to stop Scientology from at least insinuating that there is a problem. <laughs> right. Of course. Of course. Um, all right. Let's see what else we have here. Um, get the PI to interview. So we redacted this person because he's actually a well-known media figure. Mm -hmm. And what was the relationship here? Why are they talking to this guy? 
Um, he had a local radio show on ESPN radio here. He's a national figure. And uh, basically I struck up a relationship with him just friendly. And then he said, Hey, you know, I've got, I've got advertising on my radio show that, you know, why don't you take this advertising and use it and uh, promote your mortgage business and this and that. And, uh, and so that's what I did. I started doing advertising on the radio and I, I did fantastic from it. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it went great until, you know, we had the financial crash uh, in 2008. And then at that time, you know, it, it all fell apart, but they were going to go after him for some reason. And then in, in fact, they did call him. Um, you'll go to the, cause the next target is they go to my boss. Um, and that's, that's where I find out about this. So go ahead. You can go forward on it. Okay. Hold on. Let me just figure out how to hide this banner and then get back to the comments and then bada boom. Okay. Is this a, seven is what you're talking about? Uh, get the friend to contact Fisher and tell him he's been contacted by an investigator asking the friend's question about him. Yeah, basically they wanted him to do that. No, it's not seven. Keep going down. This should be a uh, first integrity mortgage. But by the way, is this having them, they're basically getting their spy to tell you that they're yeah, you're, you're way down. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, I think it's up on. higher. What, what, what is up higher? Oh, just then when they contacted my boss, and then we can go over over that there. It's, uh, well, six is the first time. Six yeah, is it's the up first. Higher. Yeah. Anyway, that's fine. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I totally forget what I was saying. Oh, is this get get the friend to contact Fisher and tell him that he has been contacted by an investigator? So this is literally Scientology telling their spy to go to you. And say, I'm being contacted by investigators about you. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's inception. It's Scientology yeah. inception. Yeah. <gasps> but they, they ended up going to that. This is all about going to Thailand. OK. And, and that type of thing. And uh, they, all they wanted me to do was to stop talking on the XSO uh, member board and putting up photos. I was posting photographs and things like that. Right. Anyway, um, this friend of mine is part of his operation after the, you know, the whole Mexico trip where they took me down to get and they surreptitiously filmed me uh, getting table dances from Mexican dancers. Um, he then arranged, he, they wanted more blackmail material on me. He's like going, hey, let's travel. You know, we, we were making good money. And it was like, oh, hey, let's go over to Thailand. You know, you, you know, it's a great country. You'll love it. And, you know, it's, it's a, just a great place to go. So I said, OK, fine. He goes, I'll pay for the first trip. You know, he paid for the trip. Right. And uh, in other dispatches, I don't think it's in this program, but they, they had a whole plan. Scientology did to get me over there and basically get me hooked up with a girl and encourage me to get married to somebody over there to basically distract me. So I went to Thailand. I loved it. OK. And uh, all, being honest about the whole thing, I'm a single man. I'm not married. And Thailand is a fantastic place. OK. And it's uh, it's known for sex tourism and uh, sex, that type of thing for single guys. Right. But it's also a great place to retire and for people to live. As a matter of fact, I know of four couples that I know right now that live in Thailand uh, where they're retired because the cost of living is so so low. I mean, you, literally everything is so inexpensive against the American dollar. And I actually was interested at that point then, you know, I was looking forward to well, what am I going to do when I retire? I don't have any children. So I was interested in possibly moving to Thailand because I loved it. I had, uh, I met, made friends over there, um, you know, both male and female friends and uh, people who had businesses. And so I really loved it, you know. And uh, so the, anyway, so then they they started taking photographs. This guy took uh, photographs of me hanging out with some of my friends and they were, they were young ladies. Okay. Um, but they were, they were of age, they were older and, and, and it wasn't even like that there were sex going on or anything like that. These are just friends of mine. Okay. And so they wanted to use this information to basically blackmail me further. And that's what that was all about. I mean, when we were talking offline yesterday, the day before, it was funny because you told me how much money you were making. We don't have to mention it, but it was a shitload of money. And you're yeah. like, 
I had this whole group of friends and it was so cheap yeah. to go anywhere. We would just all fly places together. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll give you an example. I mean, literally, I, I I met I met a girl. I did meet a girl that I was interested in, in dating, and then eventually marrying. And after several months, I I decided not to get married. But anyway, then we made friends with her friends and other people, and and so I started. You know, I didn't speak the language. You know what I mean? You don't speak the language. It's hard to get along. But but I had these people, and I had a group of friends. It was about four. A female friends and a male friend and literally we would travel around because it was so cheap i mean i could take them uh you know if i went to to the movies or to go bowling i took them with me because it didn't cost hardly anything i'll give you a good example is that you know in thailand foot massages are a big thing you can get a foot massage for hour long right it's six dollars okay so i take four people with me it's 24 dollars. you know what i mean i could spend that on a on a steak dinner you know what I mean? It was nothing to me, but it's a lot of money for them because their national average, they make about $300 a month. Okay. Wow. So like I helped a couple of, a couple of the, the, uh, my friends there, I helped them. I paid for them to go and learn English, uh, because they wanted to learn English better and also to learn how to use a computer. This is in the early two thousands and it was 300 bucks for six months for two of them to go to a, to a school and learn this stuff. It's like, yeah, no problem. I had the money and that plus I helped them. And then one of them eventually went on to the university and she was the first person in her family and in her village to ever graduate from college. And I helped her on her senior year. I helped pay for some of her tuition. So it's just, you know, the Scientology put up these hate sites about me and they have these photographs. OK, and, and it's, it's completely guilt by association. It has nothing to do with reality in terms of what was happening. You know, wow. and so, um, you know, that that's how they try and attack me. And so I, I basically, like, who cares? You know what I mean? Uh, I, I know who I am. I know I'm a good person. And, uh, you know, th it's just their way of trying to stop you from speaking out and to try and get blackmail material. And this whole reason for this trip was to entrap me. You know what I mean? Same thing with the Mexico trip it was to entrap me and to get blackmail material on me. 100 percent. And Miscavige is utterly in infatuated with matters of a sexual nature it's strange i don't know how much of it is him thinking that that's just the best way to discredit someone or if he's got some wires twisted in his head that he's just he's so infatuated with people's sex lives it's kind of disgusting yeah yeah um well and then is then we found out in these documents that my that his and osa's code name for me is mofo you know what right. i mean yeah and yeah let's mofo. get let's get to that let's get to that <laughs> And so, look, if Fisher has not decided to back off and cease his attacks on the XSO board, re-interview, uh, and we redacted that name, with more pointed questions, I, I just have, I cannot help but, but point out here. By the way, by the way, if you guys are one of the 1,600 people watching live, please do us a favor and hit that like button. It does seem to help push out notifications to other people. And who subscribe. Aren't, who aren't, <laughs> and, and subscribe to Mark Fisher. Actually, let me, uh, let me do this because Janice has given Mark a hall pass for the day <laughs> <laughs> subscribe uh, she don't to want mark. to turn me in ethics <laughs> subscribe to mark at our scientology stories peeling um peeling the onion um what i wanted to point out to everybody is that all they're trying to do is to get mark to stop posting on what is a private group he wasn't even posting on the damn internet like meaning meaning it wasn't not anyone on the internet could read the shit how many people were in this group, would you say? 30, 40. It wasn't a lot of people. <laughs> it's, that's a freaking Thanksgiving dinner. And this, <laughs> and they're, they're mobilizing these kind of resources to keep you from posting on a private group. And you're, it's not like you guys are even telling – you guys all had the same experience. You're basically talking with your friends. <laughs> it's, it's not – you're not posting on YouTube. You're not on 60 Minutes. You're not on Netflix. And this is how Scientology was reacting. This is 2007, guys. This is not ancient history. It's totally bonkers. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. I want to get down to where they – they, they sh Here's they I number 11, irate cust – get irate customers to contact Fisher's boss at First Integrity Mortgage to complain about deals that Fisher was working on. And the funny thing is is that that's how I found out about this was because this guy, Bruce Bartman, he contacted – my boss, okay, and then this Citizens Commission PI called my boss to complain about me. And, you know, in the state of Nevada, you're a licensed mortgage 
broker, okay? That means you go through background checks. You have to be licensed by the state of Nevada. And if there's a complaint, it comes from the state of Nevada. So if somebody files a complaint, it's got to go to the state of Nevada. So some citizens commission BS immediately was a red flag to him. And so he called me up. He goes, Mark, I got this really strange phone call. And he didn't know anything about me and Scientology other than just I've been working for him for three years and I was a good employee, right? And so I said, oh, my God, this is where I realized I said, that's Scientology, I told him. He goes, what's that? And I told him about Scientology and I told him about what they do. And I said, you know, I just recently uh, started speaking out a little bit on the Internet. And also I hosted a dinner when um, a bunch of the XSO members, they came on vacation to Vegas and I hosted a dinner and paid for it for them and all that. And so I said, you know, that's what that is. But I said, it's really strange because if it was really a real deal, you know, they go to the state and he goes, yeah, I agree. So he gave me the phone number of the PI. So I immediately called my ESPN radio host and I told him, hey, listen, you know, you may get a phone call from somebody from the Citizens Commission on whatever it is. Right. And uh, if you do, I'm, I just want to tell you it's Scientology. And I told him the same story. And he goes, oh, OK. He goes, oh, oh, oh yeah, no problem. Right. 20 minutes later, he calls me back. He goes, Mark, I just got a call from them. And you know what I told him? I told him they could go fuck themselves. Okay. And he hung up the phone because both my boss and the guy at ESPN, they know I'm an honest guy and a straight shooter. And they, they thought it was, thought it was ridiculous, you know? So anyway, I then got an attorney friend of mine to call the number of that private investigator at the citizens commission for whatever and told them, Listen, I will take down, I'm going to take down whatever the photographs and, and things, you know, that they're worried about and that I'm not going to, I'm not going to post any more negative stuff on there. And it, that if they continue to mess with my business, I'll be taking legal action against them. Okay. And that's why they stopped. They stopped immediately. They never went down to the lower steps where they were going to try and go to the IRS and turn me in and try and get my boss, you know, customers to complain about me and get me fired and all this other crap. So if you go up at the top of the program, you'll see the comment saying, oh, we don't need to. It's, it's already been implemented and Fisher has stopped posting the photos or whatever right there in blue, you know. So they never carried out the rest of the program. And you know, as well as I do, uh, Aaron, they're all about statistics, right? So for them, oh, this is a handled black PR source. Our stats are up. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Absolutely incredible. Uh, I want to get down to where they reveal your code name is Mofo. <laughs> I don't think it's on there, is it? Yes. Oh, it's a, is that the other document? It's in that other dispatch. Yeah, I sent you another dispatch, uh, Aaron knows this, where basically we were just talking about it. Um, they're, they're spying on all sorts of people. You know, that yeah. was the thing that Aaron pointed out. But that's where there's a whole section on me as MoFo. I said, who's MoFo, you know? and uh, But then you could figure out based on what they were doing that I'm MoFo. <laughs> yeah. So let's just, oh, that was the end of this program. Okay. So let's That's jump it, over yeah. to the other document that you were just talking about, which is this one. Again, it's the same routing uh, coming from the DCO external OSA int to the watchdog committee member for OSA. Yeah. Data. And just so you everybody knows, uh, like you said, WDC OSA was Mike Brinder. Okay. And he was in charge of the stuff then, but he left shortly after this, you know? Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, I don't hold any of this against him because I, you know, like I, we're friends, Mike and I are friends. Uh, we've all, we've all like, you know, bygones be bygones. And I, I know what pressure he was under and this was standard operating procedure apparently in OSA. So, you know, I don't hold any ill will towards Mike or anything like that. He's a great guy and he's the stuff he's done to expose Scientology is second to none. So. Yeah. So what's amazing about this one is Mike uh, Rinder as WDC OSA had sent the DCO external, Linda, a whole bunch of questions. And this dispatch is her answer right. to all of his questions. And what I thought was amazing about this dispatch, and we will not go through it in painful detail, but it gives a glimpse into just how many people they were trying to track and monitor and just how deep into their lives they were getting. So let's see here. Um, you gave me the list of the posters. Is this just XSO or does it also include cl uh, Clambake, ARS and whatever else? I'm not literally looking for only the people on one chat, but who the people are that are out there that are potential problems or are stirring things up. And uh, she talks about uh, uh, one of the uh, funniest things about this is later on in this dispatch, they're giving a whole update on what Mark Headley's up to. 
And then later on, even lower in the dispatch, they're like, okay, so here's the latest things on us still trying to figure out who blown for good is. Yeah, they're trying to figure <laughs> out who BFG is. <laughs> That's right. So look at all these people they were trying to monitor. Stefan Castle, Georgiana Lane, Jimmy Yo, Stephen Cook, Jeff Hawkins. Um, let's see. April Hall, Fred Harris. Who the hell knew that Fred Harris had blown the sea? Or I had no it? idea. TDV is Tom DeVocht. Tom Gil DeVocht. And Gabriel Llewellyn. I don't even know who those guys are. And there's number two. That's where I mentioned. I wasn't, I wasn't aware. aware that Mofo. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Read it. Read it I wasn't aware that Mofo was one of the people that is a source of N theta natter, which that's what they call, you know, speaking badly about Scientology. When did this start? Pull together some of the recent traffic from MF, which is me, CB, which is Chuck uh, Beatty, AL is Arnie Lerma, and NM is Nancy Maney, right? Wow. And then they answered, on MoFo, he has been known for some years to be an avid reader of ARS and other internet theater. However, he's not posted on ARS or a clam bake. Anyway, it just goes on. Wow. Attached to some of the recent traffic from uh, Fisher, Beatty, and Maney. Uh, we were public enemy number one, apparently, on, on this uh, hit list. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the XSO stuff <clears throat> is one of the reasons that it says Lerma is not a regular is because he wasn't in the XSO group. He got kicked out. He got right. kicked. See at the bottom there says Wenlock was has blocked postings from Armstrong, Skip Press, and others. He considers too inflammatory, and Lerma was one of them too. Oh, Wenlock. What what's his full name? That guy? Mick Wen Mick Wenlock. He's he's a uh, he's a former Sea Org executive. Really great guy, um, and he's the one who started the XSO message board so that people could reconnect. I have never heard his name before. Do you know what his post was? Oh, he used to be uh, the deputy CO of uh, Europe under Guillaume Lasarve when Guillaume was the ED CO, the commanding officer for Europe, and they were opening up missions and orgs all over the all over Europe. And he actually went to jail with uh, he was uh, when Heber Jens was uh, arrested in Spain, you know, uh, because you know of fraud in in Spain. Uh, Mick was also arrested at the same time, but he he left the Sea Org a long time ago. So this guy was DCO CLO EU and uh, yeah. and he but he'd been out for a while by the time XSO mm -hmm. opened up. Yep. Wow. Yeah, his story's a his story's a long one. It's very sad, and uh, he's a great guy. Anyway. Is he alive? Is he alive? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Are you in touch with him? Can you say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, very cool. Well, if everyone wants to chat, please give him my number. Yeah, a lot of people that may be watching, they know who he is. Him and his his wife. Uh, you know, they like I said, they started XSO and and uh, they, you know, they're in, in there, but they don't speak out anymore. But uh, okay, you know, he's right. a good guy. All right. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any other people they were spying on. Yeah, um, roll down. You know, they were spying on Nancy Maney, um, uh, other people. They're spying Chuck on Beatty. Sterling, Sterling Tompkins, Tompkins, yeah, uh, um, Jeff Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Who's S and J M? Any idea? Oh, oh, oh. Is that yeah, Sterling's Sterling and, Ju and Justin Miscavige? Yeah. Oh, Justin Miscavige. Yeah. Jeff Hawkins, Nancy Manny. Who's J G? Janice. Janice Grady. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because you go down, they'll say Janice, and then they don't really have anything to do with it. They hate me. Everybody hates me except Janice in Las Vegas, which is BS. <laughs> So RM is Ronnie Miscavige. BM is yeah. Benny Miscavige. Benny Miscavige, yep. So Ronnie Miscavige for everyone. That's David Miscavige's older brother. Um, okay. Da, da, da. Mick, who's Mick here? Mick Wenlock. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, Justin is a freeloader. Da, 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 da. His girlfriend, Tina. Was Tina XSO or is she just someone who's being mentioned? I don't know. Okay. Um, Uh-oh. That noise has returned. You got some body fainting, Mark. You can't hear that? Okay. No, I don't hear anything. <laughs> I can't believe you can't hear that. Okay. There, there's Janice right there on JG. Go up. Yeah, that's on Janice. JG. She works in the mortgage business still and is very focused on her kids, particularly her daughter who's trying to break into acting. We learned about the time of the reunion that she and Paul had a disagreement regarding the church as Paul was interested in possibly getting back in good standing, but Janice was not at all. Around Christmas time, she emailed Bobby Lyons, who was a Scientology. He was an actor uh, for many years at Celebrity Center and an actor, asking for help in hooking her daughter up with some acting com lines uh, of his in Los Angeles. Bobby didn't know she was declared, but checked with uh, OSA and uh, a social back and forth. And basically, he cut communication with Janice. 
Well, I was going to say, how did they know who the hell she emailed? But that's because Bobby turned around and, and reported it all to Scientology. Right. Yeah. It's just yeah. all, you know, they, they're spying. And Janice is going like, how the heck did they know all this? You know, that's right. And it's a perfect Here, example. Most recently. Oh, sorry. Most recently, we heard through Mofo that he, Mofo, was upset with Paul as Paul would not even look at any negative, anything negative on the church. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Now, I got to be honest. How do they know that Paul was upset with you? Who's reporting that? You know, again, Ferris Khan would get the oh. information from me, I guess, to some degree. I don't know. You know, it's crazy. Wow. OK, so. Um, oh, this is about Suzette. That is that Suzette. Um, Suzette uh, 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 Barnett. Shelly Miscavige's sister. Sister. Right. So Suzette was living. And this is Claire. Claire Headley. Sorry. So I, I believe at one point when Mark and Claire had left the Sea Org but were living in Los Angeles, was Suzette living in their backyard? Yeah. Not not like in a tent, but in like a mother-in-law suite? No, like they had like a, 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 a what it, guest, guest house or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, God. It, it really makes my stomach turn when you see things like Claire just had her baby. It's like, man, the idea of them knowing everything is just fucking sickening. Um mm -hmm. Was Suzette spying on these guys, or what's the deal here? No, she they want they want she wanted to they wanted her to get back in good standing, so they were working on her freeloader debt apparently. And then I heard I think Claire mentioned on a recent show the one that they did on on Barney Barnett um, that Suzette eventually did get back in good standing, went back they got her back into Scientology. Wow, here's where they're looking for BFG's identity. What specifically is being done to confirm the identity of Blown for Good? <laughs> This is so funny that they're reporting on Mark and Claire <laughs> while also still trying to figure out who the hell Mark is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. A resource was found and was briefed on Friday. He's going to work his way into Headley so we can find out whether this is him and what he is really up to. A PI has also started checking the special collection line. That means buying their trash. Okay. So far, nothing has turned up. I, I'm dying. I have to ask Mark if he knows who this uh, ended up being. What resource did they send in on Mark at that time? Um, then they talk about Chuck Beatty. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Another resource will pull the strings with Chuck. Oh, so they're trying to milk Chuck for information that Chuck might know right. who it is. Um, they're going to try to spy on Jeff to find out. Um, oh, Okay, yeah, interesting. Um, Tom DeVock, they're Alan Cartwright. What's up with Alan Cartwright? Who's that? I, I don't know. I don't oh. actually know. I, I wasn't. I'm not sure if he was like somebody that used to be in OSA Legal or if he was a um, tech staff. I don't remember that name. It sounds like someone's talking mad shit about Neil Levin and Judy Fontana. Do you know who those people are? No. Okay. Um, uh, 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 so look, they determine here in this case, CB is Chuck Beatty. It would appear that yeah. Chuck Beatty is a key target to handle. If not mm -hmm. the who, at least he is right up there on the attackers that need to be dismissed. So attackers. So this is Scientology's enemies list. I mean, the names that yeah. we're talking about in this dispatch, this program, this is no, this is a dispatch Scientology's enemies list. Wow. Wow. And then it says, then the same thing for AL, Arnie Lerma, Mofo, me, and Nancy Maney. This is really the crux of it, as I'm very wary of filing a suit right now when OSA is probably incapable of executing it. And we may start another copyright infringement mess. <laughs> but there has to be some handling, and those references tell you what to do. Wow. <laughs> uh, I love how, how, how Chuck Beatty, um, he was really like, uh, he was... Um, he really had them worried. <laughs> yeah. And to be honest with you, I mean, he did, he, you know, he, he's one of the ones that, you know, started speaking out before a lot of people on ARS and the operation clam bake and all that. And, and literally, you know, we were so afraid, you know, as former Sea Org members, here's uh, mofo stuff. Um, we were so afraid to speak out because we didn't, know you know what to do or whatever or who to, to speak with and also you so you're a little bit afraid you didn't know what scientology could do to you so by reconnecting with some of these ex York members and stuff it actually made you feel safe that you could speak out and 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 compare notes you know and uh, and it nothing would happen to you but of course we didn't know that, that we were being watched yeah <laughs> so they totally admit in this program that they've had someone on you for years you yeah know? Mm -hmm. 
Um, and, and, and then the rest is, is just posts. Yeah. This is the last thing we'll just show everyone because um, this is just them scraping the internet for every post these guys are making. The rest of this entire document is just a copy and paste of the posts that these people were making in that XSO group. Oh, wait, what's this? Uh, That's an analysis of the Entheta by the different people. I haven't read that far down. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, there we go. Guys, this is one of 5,000 documents leaked from the Office of Special Affairs International's private files. And um, do, you, do you want to show the photograph of my friend? I will try. Okay, let me see. Uh, figuring out all my. Screens. We looked him up. Um, he lives in Phoenix. We looked him up in February when Janice and I were there with a bunch of friends, and um, he's a real estate agent now in Scottsdale. You know, his name's Ferris Khan, and uh, mm. uh, you know, after I confronted him in 2009 when the uh, the Truth Rundown came out. He tried to turn it around on me saying like, oh, it's all your fault. And, you know, you this and this and this. And I just kept saying over and over again, look, just answer one question for me. Was Scientology paying you to spy on me? And he would never answer that. That's him in the hat with the glasses. Um, the, oh. the, the picture, the top one on the top left is Dave LeBeau <clears throat> with me. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. I'm going to do my best here to actually show things. Uh, okay, so that's what's his name again? Ferris Khan. That's in uh, Thailand. Okay. You'll see other pictures where you can see his face. And then we have a picture. That's me in Mexico with him on that trip, that bogus trip, the one on the left by the ocean. That one right there. Okay, hold on. I got to get my little. That was the all expense paid trip to part of a yarda. Hey, you looked a little younger back then. I sure did. I had a beard and all that. Yeah. I just want to comment on something I saw in the comments. Someone was like, you know, all the stuff in Thailand is not a really good look was the comment. And how I want to respond to that is, you know what? If everyone worried about what the fuck Scientology could do to embarrass them and humiliate them, nobody would ever speak out about Scientology abuses. So I don't right. really I, I don't want to get a little, uh, you know, I don't want to overreact here. But it's like I don't have a lot of patience for people making shitty comments about, uh, you know, what it means for someone's personal character, the dirt that Scientology is trying to expose on them. Like what we're doing here is giving a big middle finger to David Miscavige and Scientology and saying, Fuck you. There's literally nothing you can do to make us go away and shut up. And if that means you make me look like a scumbag and you try to humiliate me and all that shit, go fuck yourself because we're here and you're not going to make us go anywhere. So honestly, save the bullshit comments. It's a little inappropriate for this stream. I'm just going to uh, honestly. Yeah. And, and basically the point is, is that Scientology uses their tax, you know, free money to do these type of things, to entrap people. Why? To get them to not tell the truth. They don't want their truth out there. And so they go to these measures to try and get people, right? But who cares? You know, they're, they're going to do whatever they can to discredit you, but that's not the point. Listen, this is an organization where the founder was married to two women at the same time, was a deadbeat dad to his his uh, first set of kids and basically had multiple affairs and whose current leader has his wife locked away mm -hmm. somewhere and has having a relationship apparently with his assistant. So don't preach to me about morals or ethics when it yeah. comes to that. It's a bunch of BS. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, instead of saying this really doesn't make you look good. It's wow. How brave of you to stick your neck out there and expose this stuff publicly, despite the fact that Scientology is going to try to use it to embarrass you or humiliate you or whatever. It's yeah. Like, and at this point, like I said, I don't care because I don't have any reputation to be ruined. Do you know what I mean? <sighs> you know, I mean, yeah. When I had, well, you know, like when I had, well, you a, have you know, a reputation, you just don't have anything they yeah. can threaten. You know what I'm saying? Right. But they could, when I was in the mortgage mm -hmm. business, because I had a, big thriving business. And just like, you know, the Headleys, they came after their clients, that, that that's a problem. And then you have to deal with that when you have a business where they're trying to smear you, you know, but when you don't have nothing, you have nothing that they can smear you with anymore. It's, it's kind of new moot, you know? Yeah. Um, 
so hey, before we wrap this up, there are some super chats I want to respond to. Uh, Pembroke Love. Hey, earlier when you were on with Mitch Brisker, he said someone ratted out of Scientology according to da, 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 da. what does ratted out mean in this sense? Pembroke, I got an email about this too, but maybe it was from you. Um, what Mitch said was that um, – uh, uh, what was the guy? Barrett Oliver. He said he routed out R O U T E D. What, <laughs> that, what that means is you left the C organization according to Scientology's correct prop procedures instead of um, escaping and leaving without permission. That's what that means. Um, and I'm going to bring this up just so I can refer back to it so I don't forget this later. Uh, Reese in the Rain, FYI, Barrett Oliver was married to Sandy Wooderson while in Scientology and sent to RTC at some point per Tony Ortega post of August 2nd, 2014. I've got to look that up. If the never ending story guy was in RTC, that is going to make my day. That is incredible. Did you know anything about, did you ever know Barrett Oliver? Wait, when did you leave? No. Mm -mm. When did you leave? 1990. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, No, ancient Um, history. <laughs> um, I was in fifth grade at that time. So Ste- <laughs> Stephanie Sandoval, off topic, but what percent of people left in Scientology know it's BS and only stay because of family? Honestly, probably half at this point. <laughs> I mean, I, I, 20, 25% to 50% is my, my guess. Um, yeah. Sydney Mo, A. A. Ron and Mark. Sorry if this is already answered, but who is the current head of OSA? Who are the big players besides the head? You know, I would have said Kurt Weiland, but I honestly don't know. Is Kurt Weiland one I, of the guys who hasn't been? Well, he's missing. He's one of the people that they're looking for. That's what I thought. Um, but no, Linda Hamill, apparently, that was what I heard, who used to be the deputy commanding officer who wrote these things. Okay. I, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I, I suspect. Okay, so the big players besides David Miscavige, other than um, uh, who's the Danilovich? Which Danilovich married uh, Dicko's son? Uh, it's not Alicia. It's not Alicia Danilovich, is it? Is she the RTC rep for the ILO? I, is I it have Ali- no idea. I know. I know. Kate's in the chat. Kate, who's who's the RTC rep for the ILO? That's basically running Scientology from it. She's basically she's basically middle management. Uh, well, she's David Miscavige's representative at middle management. Okay. Uh, other than David Miscavige. Um, well, there was Kirsten Catano who used to be married to my former brother-in-law, but now she's not married to him anymore, but she comes up in a lot of these dispatches and stuff, but she's just an OSA stooge. She doesn't run anything. Yeah. No, I I know you're there, Kate. Who's (laughs) which, which Danilovich it's something Danilovich. It's a, it's a woman and her last name's Danel Tracy, Tracy Danilovich, Tracy, Tracy Danilovich is basically, um, well, she's the RTC rep for the ILO. And so. She runs middle management and there is no international management, essentially. And if any, anyone wants to jump into the live chat or even the replay comments and uh, provide extra expertise on that, that would be really, really cool. Uh, let's see. Matrix Tech Solutions, one of my favorite handles. Uh, J- John Sostovsky, I sent you a hat that was delivered today, Captain. Oh, did you send me a freaking Sea Org Captain hat or a, a funny little Navy Captain hat? John, <laughs> John, I did get the other things that you sent me. Um, what is, uh, Mark, you probably know, what is the name of this doll here? This funny doll? Uh, that's Mr. Bill. Okay. To me, it looks like a sex doll. What is Mr. Bill? <laughs> it's a Saturday, it's a Saturday night live. Uh, they used to do these films, the little, little short films and Mr. Bill, and the this is like the late seventies when Saturday night live start and Mr. Bill would be like, Oh, it was such a great day, Mr. Hand. How's it going, Mr. Hand? And you'd always be like, Oh, 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 and Mr. Hand would come down and smash him. It's a clay doll. So it was kind of like Roadrunner, you know how the Roadrunner and Coyote would all, Coyote would always oh. get smashed. Mr. Bill would always get smashed. Well, John sent me a Mr. Bill doll, and he sent me a really small version of this doll. <laughs> uh, John's always sending me shit. I love it. Um, okay. Now, by the and- way, Aaron, Aaron, you should check on on YouTube. You should look for Mr. Bill. Just watch one. You're gonna die laughing. They're so funny. Okay. Uh, let's see. Not a sheeple. Aaron, it's about time you finally let them have it. You've been patient and diplomatic for far too long. SPTV rules. <laughs> patient and diplomatic is um, not how I'm normally described, but thank you very much. Joni Cummings. Mark, Aaron, I'm glad that you are letting Scientology and OSA have it. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Pembroke Love. Thanks. The CCs are hell. Hashtag deaf life. Oh, the closed captions are probably ridiculously inaccurate with all the stuff that we're talking about. Oh. <laughs> 
Um, okay, let me see. Ben Love says, I can't seem to get super chats through. Please read my message that isn't a super chat. Ben, the problem is that it's not possible to just do a search on the comments. I'm going to scroll up real quick and see if I can quickly find find one um, while you're looking can i tell people please subscribe to our channel janice and i channel we try and tell the history of scientology prior to 1990 uh janice has tremendous contacts with people who used to be in the sea organization in scientology and we have lots of photographs and so we try and share those stories about what it was like back then and also about the abuses of l ron hubbard and david miscavige and things like that so like you know Go to our channel, subscribe there. Just for example, we did a live stream last Saturday about uh, we had uh, David and Shelley Miscavige's wedding photos, okay, uh, from 1980. And it turned out that her her boyfriend before David Miscavige, he reached out to us and we had him as a surprise guest. He'd never spoken out before. And uh, he was a great guest. His name's Tom Francis. So, you know, go to our channel. All of our uh, our videos are on playlists that to try and make it easier for you to find them. But I think you'll, you'll learn a lot and and, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them. Yeah. Ben, I just scrolled up really far in the comments and I could not find your comments. So um, sorry about that. But but at least you do know that your super chats do work now because you, you did get one through. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's all. Guys, later this evening, I am still going to be doing another live stream. Uh, it is. Uh, we're going to be exposing another Scientology predator in this uh live stream this evening so not not everyone's cup of tea but if you want to see some uh predators get exposed stay tuned for that hey this has been a lot of fun mark thank you for doing this with me and hey, no problem man it's like we're we're just telling the truth you know and when you did that earlier program i went i got a story for you and i'm glad that we could do it on your channel because you have such a large reach and i really appreciate what you do aaron well, it's my pleasure. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for everyone who watches until the very end. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. If you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click.